into the next couple of hours by 2 o'clock. Notice how these kind of fill in and become a little bit more numerous, a little bit more intense. We're going to see the possibility of supercell thunderstorms today, and those are the ones that bring typically large hail and the possibility of a tornado. So we will watch those closely. I think that the thunderstorms are north of our viewing area. Warm front lifted through last night, and that's why we're seeing that breezy south wind. It's situated just to our north, so anything that's developing that's somewhat strong is staying to our north this morning, but we do off to the south. That's where I'm concerned more about the roads being very slick. If they're not treated, we could see areas of about a tenth to two tenths of an inch of ice. And then off to the north, no ice concerns, but maybe an inch or two of snow. Now, Friday and Saturday is something we've been watching for the last day or so. The forecast models begin becoming a little bit more consistent with the timing of our next system. We could possibly see a rain snow mix on Friday. Details on that probably won't come for another few days. Jet stream kind of looping and well to our north. So that's kind of why we are locked into that hot pattern. Areas off to the west across the plains seeing a decent chance of showers and thunderstorms today and we're really not going to see much until good morning again it's christmas eve good as morning. you can see she's in a festive, feeling festive. She's the got snow the is coming now watch my athletic ability here i i, I tried to get a little fancy here there. <laughs> <laughs> i got the red shoes and i got candy cane socks on and now a hamstring pull but hey so is life any questions any, any questions <laughs> And you are, I don't want to give away your Halloween costume. Well, I've been wanting to be this for Halloween since yes. last year, and I, I worked last Halloween morning. So yeah. this year I'm actually going to be able to celebrate. So i got to find it. Meteorologists say the city could start feeling the storm's winds by tonight. So what's the latest track? Well, Jessica Quick has been following it all week. Hey, Jessica. Hey, luckily we have quiet weather here in St. Louis. It's giving us plenty of time to keep an eye on this. And right now in the Atlantic, we actually have three storms we're keeping an eye on, including Irma, the one there in the center near uh, Puerto Rico, moving towards the Dominican right now. That is Irma, still a Category 5 storm with winds up to 175 to 180 miles per hour. Hurricane warnings in effect for all of the islands, including the Bahamas now and watches for parts of Florida. As you just said, we could see the possible landfall as early as the end of the weekend for South Florida and possibly a second landfall into the Carolinas by early next week. It's still expected to be a category three or four by the time it could impact Florida, dumping tons of rain. This is the potential rainfall forecast where you're seeing those bright yellows. That's indicating more than possibly 10 inches of rain by the end of the weekend into early next week. And the winds, as you mentioned, as well will start impacting South Florida by Saturday afternoon. Sustained winds anywhere from 50 to 60 miles per hour on Saturday afternoon. And then by Sunday, that's when we're expecting the most intense winds. Look at this, the center of the storm close to 130 mile per hour winds, and that is sustained, meaning those gusts will continue throughout the day. Yeah. I could use some rain, but oh it looks like gosh. it's not coming. This week has been crazy. We've had three records fall already, and today we are only a degree under another record for the heat. For right. the heat. But it's going to cool off. It's going right? to cool down. We got a cold front moving through tonight, and that's really going to bring some changes for the rest of the week, and they're going to last for a while. We've been waiting for this. The first day of fall was Friday. We've had this heat hanging around. High today was 93, record 94. So another hot one. But again, it's not going to last very long. The cooler air is already starting to settle in from the west. Most areas across the by states still in the upper 80s to low 90s, but out to our west already settling into the 70s out towards Columbia and the Lake of the Ozarks. So that is on the way for tonight. Your overnight lows pretty mild, still warmer than average, falling to around 64 tonight, mostly cloudy. Could have a chance of a pop up shower, especially early on tonight into tomorrow morning, but most areas stay dry. Those are going to be pretty sparse. Tomorrow's high about 15 degrees cooler at 77 and we're going to have a nice breeze coming in from the northwest. Right now across the five on your side radar, just a couple of pop up showers, maybe a couple rumbles of thunder out to the west. as The front starts to move in some of those showers between Union and Washington now and just to the west of Union. As we head back farther south right along I-44, some of those starting to pop up out ahead of that front. But as it moves through, we are going to see the increase in clouds into the overnight hours. High pressure finally starts to edge in for tomorrow, and that is going to keep the cool weather on lockdown for the rest of the week. Future cast for this evening kind of showing where those showers are popping up here into the next few hours. As we get into the overnight hours, a cloudy sky for most of us. Maybe a couple showers hanging around for the morning commute tomorrow, but again, it's not widespread. Most of the afternoon is dry and kind of cloudy with that northwest wind really pushing in those clouds. As we get into the evening, those really sink out by Thursday morning. 
we could have some areas falling into the upper 40s for overnight lows mid 50s for St. Louis and it looks like we're gonna have a pretty quiet end to the work week and a nice end to the weekend, but no real rain chances here over the next several days. Most areas still in abnormally dry conditions where you've seen that bright yellow St. Louis Metro and then back off to the southwest moderate drought. We are well below where we should be for this time of year. We should be up by about two more inches. So any rain chances in the seven day, we could really use those and they're looking kind of slim. Keep the cooler weather, start to warm up a little bit for early next week and the rain chances are pretty slim, but yeah, we're going to keep darn. them in there for Monday and Tuesday. All right, Jessica, thanks. Coming up in hey, that many of the Christmas toys for patients at Shriners Hospital for Children were destroyed in that fire. Well, today we're doing something about it. Jessica Quick is live at one of the four five on your side toy drive locations going on right now. She's at Lori Shoes in Glendale. How's it going, Jessica? It's been steady. I've been here for a couple of hours and almost don't have enough space to stand. The toys have been really filling in and people have just been so generous. Just show up, drop it off and sometimes just even leave just to do their part in helping out the St. Louis community. And we talked to one little boy who's doing his own part. who's actually been collecting money for these toys right here. He's a 10 year old with an ear for music. They're music that is already produced already made but you can make it and then have a screen back shot so what so it's pretty it's pretty it's a really cool website and a heart for others you may remember connor five on your I side first introduced you to him last holiday season when he collected money for children who are also patients at trainers hospital just like him it's so important that i wanted to do it is because shriners has done a lot for me leg wise Connor has been treated for a leg condition at Shriners and wanted to make Christmas special for kids who can't leave the hospital this year. Last year, Connor organized a pajama day at school where students could donate a dollar to wear their PJs to class. The money went towards toys for kids at Shriners that he delivered himself. It felt amazing to me and their reactions just had, especially the ones that I got personal presents for because they're going through harder stuff than I am so I got them personal presents and they had to stay in for in the hospital for Christmas. This year Connor planned a bake sale that raised about $1,300 and he says he's not done yet. This week's fire at a South City warehouse destroyed hundreds of toys that were meant to go to children at the hospital. I was really upset when it when I heard about it. I did not like to I did not like it. It pushed me past the limit. I really, really want to go beyond this year. Connor's mom said he took the news pretty hard. He was very emotional. He he cried a little bit, but then he didn't talk for a long time. I said, well, what do you want to do about it, sweetheart? He goes, well, we already got the money to do the toy drive. I said, well, if you want to take more toys over to them, that's absolutely. He goes, well, I have to do what I have to do for my home. And you can just see all the generosity from St. Louis, all of our viewers that have been coming in, just stopping by, bringing by what they can. You can continue to do that throughout the evening. A little bit of good news about Connor. He's going to be finishing up his treatments in the next six months, Kay. But you know what, Jessica, you can tell that Shriners will always be in his heart. He'll probably always be fundraising for Shriners. You know, and his mom said that he wants to be a Shriner when he grows up. It's just a fantastic story, so wonderful. Thank you so much, Jessica.